How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Blue Shifting, and welcome back to the Fruit of Grisaya. It's been a while. I got... I hate it when it gets sick because it just feels like it's been so long. It actually has been, technically, if you think about it, because it's like, you missed two weeks, and it feels like, oh, you missed two episodes, but then you also, like, think, oh, that's, like, almost 14 whole days, and that feels like a lot when you say it like that. So, yeah, it's been a while, but I'm glad to be back, finally. I'm glad to be feeling better. I'm not 100% still, which is really sad, right? Like, like sometimes when you get these, like, like flus, it's just, they just want to linger. They don't want to go away. But I'm feeling a lot better, thankfully. So we're here, and we're going to be able to jump back into this story, which I'm actually really, really... <sighs> I got to say, like, the big reason why I was really interested in the Michiru route, it really almost wasn't even just the character development stuff. Because I think Michiru's character... While really compelling at the very end, uh, even before that, I was more drawn in by the fact that I feel like every time she's like going through her random shenanigans, like it just makes me smile. It makes me chuckle and laugh, uh, which isn't consistent with the other characters. So even this opening right here where we're just walking and she's casually turning like a really heart to heart moment that we just had with her in her room and is twisting it into some narrative right in front of us that's going to immediately implode and just knowing how that's going to happen in general plus knowing I also have no clue what's actually going to happen mixes into this great like just kind of anticipation of joy where I'm like I know this is going to be great and it's weird because like I could see some people comparing some of like the the shenanigans and randomness with uh, Machina, and you could be like, "Well, why do you dislike Machina so much?" It's like I don't know. It rubs me the wrong way. It's not even the really, you know, questionable angle that that it tends to take with you know characters like Machina. But even then, it's like there's just a very different flavor that I don't know if everyone would agree with me that uh, uh, that it exists. But for me, it's very, very apparent and very stark. So, yeah. Anyway, I know there's not much else to say. We just had that really nice heart-to-heart. -heart. We're kind of, like, finally on the same page with her. So here we go, jumping right into it. And, uh, yeah, let's see where it takes us today on this wonderful Friday. So she's like, yep, bars in my room. And said, I... I, I Twist your tiptoes tell you toot, which is an interesting phrase. What kind of business exactly? Uh-huh, cuz you know, I was just standing here. Since that day, Michiru seems to have gotten back into her normal rhythm, even cracking jokes at my expense. Everything isn't quite back to the way it was before, but she seems to be having gradually... She seems to have gradually regained her balance. Very true. Twisted toes? That's nothing. Here's a story once about a journalist who got abducted by a terrorist group. They broke out the uh, pliers and... Ugh. Uh, all right, then guess that's enough for that story. <laughs> At least he's a little better at reading the room. What is that? Like, is that some kind of TV boss or something? It must be a TV boss. Oh. Okay, it's just one of those really random coincidences, maybe. What? How? What? How is someone supposed to have oversight over your dreaming? You're crazy. And there she goes. Hey, Amane. <laughs> uh, now we're here. It's like, oh, okay. Now what do we do? Because we still haven't quite defined what we are. We're kind of a thing, but not. Because all we did was talk 
about like stuff. No. Nanio. Uh huh. Nothing in particular. Oh. What? Me too. Stay here. What? Nani nani. The details are unclear. Keep quiet. Stand by at your present location. Don't make me repeat myself again. That scream from outside sounded like Sakaki. Hopefully it's nothing serious, but... Sakaki, where are you? Respond. <laughs> oh, what the fetch? Damn, where is she? Sakaki! <laughs> is that sounding a little more serious? What is it? What happened? <laughs> it fell? What, what fell? Now... <laughs> Out of the sky. What? A cat, you say? I follow Sakaki's gaze and find a familiar black cat bounding lightly away into a neighboring nearby hedge. I must have been wandering around the area looking for Michiru. Hmm, that's Michiru's cat, isn't it? No, no, no. No, you're misunderstanding. This is almost certainly pure coincidence. You most likely happened to pass by just as it was jumping down from a high place nearby. I doubt the cat did it out of malice either. So, so that's good, but... Hmm. I'm a little I mean, I guess. The cat really... I guess if, you, if you're nervous around animals in general, maybe it would be kind of scary, but like... I've never thought of cats as being terrifying. Like, like, I understand dogs, especially when they're larger, they're scary. Like, you know they could tackle you down, you know if they're aggressive, they can do some damage. A cat, I mean, it could do damage, but most often cats don't go on the offensive, especially against something much bigger than them. Like, if, if a cat goes on the offensive with a person, it's usually to defend, like, their kittens or something. I've never heard of, like, a hyper-aggressive cat unless it, it, like, was, you know, rabbit or something. He's so brave. I thought I ordered you to stay at your post, maggot. Why did you disobey me? Fair. True enough, but you can't deny there was a possibility of real danger. That's why I told you to stay where you were. I really hope we can figure that much out for yourself. <laughs> what a great, what a great argument. Shut up. I mean, maybe you were right, but shut up. <laughs> Uh -huh. Oh, I expected there was going to be more to that line. Okay. Your tsundere brain, huh? What's that going to turn up? There's a tsundere brain. Okay, so for some reason it feels like that line was split up a little oddly, but maybe it's just because like the thoughts um, were stuck together in a much in a sentence that came out much shorter than made sense for the screen so like the, the translator broke it up even though it's very clear that like, that phrase soon there a brain was in the latter part not the not the center it's not raining <laughs> <laughs> See, like, this feels like she's just joking around. Like, she's probably not, but it feels more like a joke. そもそも。あの猫は松島さんのだって聞いたけど。違うの。違う。私は猫なんて飼ってないもん。それでその猫にじゃなくて、どこの馬かわからない猫はどこに行ったの? <laughs> 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 Huh? 
I, I, can we just go find the cat? Like, <laughs> you two could just keep uh, continuing whatever this conversation is gonna become. <laughs> Kitty meow. Aww. That's very cute. And maybe that's the problem. The cat was trying to jump on uh, Michiru's head, but mistook Michiru for. I guess that it could happen. Oh, really does look like it's com a comfortable perch, doesn't it? <laughs> that's your that that the good. All right, that's an angle you can take it. The comfortably perched one. Again, I imagine her big fear here isn't that she just doesn't want to acknowledge the cat, which is like what I originally thought was kind of happening was that she didn't want to like appear like she had an attachment to a cat. Uh, but it actually might be a genuine fear that the cat will be, like, evicted and forced away. Which is a genuine problem because, like, it is technically against the rules. And Yumiko is the one who can enforce that rule if she wants to. So this is a delicate situation, technically. Yumiko... <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know they're just internet memes? They're not actually real. I'm fairly sure cats do exist, exactly, actually. In an apparent attempt to protect her cat, Michiru begins to lay out a rather radical new theory. <laughs> She's probably thinking Sakaki might talk to the administration and get the animal taken away from her. Like I said, it's a defensive mechanism. It's an interesting angle to take. But like I said, if you just explain that cats are just internet memes, they're not actually real and they can't hurt you, maybe, just maybe, you can get it to work. So, so... Then,百歩譲ってそれが猫じゃないとしたら、頭の上に乗っているのは何今の私に言えることは、すべて幻。だから本当はここには何もいません。見えているのは錯覚です。泣いたけど。泣いてないでしょ。完全に泣いてないでしょ。いやいや。ああ、そう、キュート。二度。二度泣いたけど。ああ、そうですね。泣いたね。じゃ、呪いだ、こりゃ。うん。猫の呪いだ
at this point, it's like we're just leaving Earth's orbit as far as like incomprehensibility, but like it almost feels inconsequential at this point. I do understand the girl's forcing out of show uh, out a show of cheerfulness to mask the continued in instability of her emotions, and more simply, she's excited by her new pet. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the other part. She has those blank out moments, and they're becoming more and more frequent and more and more. Like, like, larger and larger gaps, and so she feels like her own mind is slowly fading away. That's terrifying. Existential horrifying. And no one she can talk to would ever believe her. And so, yeah, I can understand her wanting to just do whatever she wants and to, like, make up stuff as she goes. Like, I totally get it. That said, no matter what the circumstances may be, this illusion and cat curse strategy strikes me as more than a little windsworthy, even by Michiru standards. Guess I'll see if Chizu Chizu can get me that standard vet cat vaccines. There's no telling what sort of viruses or infections a stray might have picked up. In some cases, feline intestinal worms can infect human beings. Ooh, Michiru's stomach is weak at the best of times, so a little caution seems warranted. I have to be very careful about being too nice, though. Don't need a certain ca uh, capricious creature getting emotionally attached to me. I wonder who he was referring to there. Was it the cat or the, or the girl? <laughs> There's only one truth, but the same facts will inevitably be interpreted in wildly different ways depending on the viewpoint of the observer. The winner writes the history books, and they always come out looking pretty good. If you're searching for the absolute truth, you've got no choice but to wade through various accounts with a critical eye, painstakingly piecing things together, a more neutral perspective. But even then, clearly distorted information can often throw your puzzle into a confused jumble. No, not clearly. Cleverly distorted information. So how about this? Instead of sifting through everything you can find, dramatically restrict your sources of information. Ignore the third parties entirely and talk only to those who are directly involved. Well, that'd be great, but I can't be everywhere in order to understand what's going on. In most cases, that's simply not practical, but every once in a great while, it's an effective strategy. Coming in. That's unfortunately wishful thinking, I'm guessing. No, I see your face in my dreams every night. Real nice expression on it, too, if you know what I mean. <laughs> She's like, what am I supposed to do with that? It's just vilely implicating, like, very odd things. Okay, enough joking around. Sorry to barge in like this, but there is actually something I was hoping you could get for me. Hmm. I do my job with the tools I'm given. This concerns my private life. Well, times have changed. Where we, we intentionally made a choice to come here because we wanted one of those so it makes sense we'd have one i'd like you to give me a dose of com uh, a dose of combination vaccine for a cat can you do that i'm on a leash myself why would i do the same to an animal <laughs> Anyway, I want to give the cat one of those three-in-one shots at the very least, and just for safety's sake, can you give me a, a get? Can you get it tested for common diseases? I'll get a blood sample for you. You hold on yourself. I have a cat. I know how expensive this stuff is. It's not that bad. Granted, it's not like I don't know. Maybe it's t different times and. And all of that, but we got we because we adopted a stray that had been abandoned that we found as a kitten. So we took it in and we had to get it tested and treated for all kinds of stuff. Because a lot of it's vaccinations, which is like universally needed for your cat. And then you gotta test for worms and all of that. We had to do all of it. And it was like a couple hundred dollars. I understand, like, like most people can't just shell that out for, you know, at the drop of a hat, but also, if you're gonna go to the trouble of having a pet, like, you, you, you probably are prepared for that, but then, you think on the budget levels of a school, that should be manageable. 
But granted, maybe this isn't something that could be covered by that and that's what had to be covered by her privately and that would make a lot more sense. True enough, I guess. でも、相手は風見くんですものね。サービスして、ご種の混合ワクチンぐらいなら個人的に用意してあげましょう。あ、it's oh, still a help. Appreciate it. All right then, I'll see you in my dreams. As I turn to leave, Chizuru grabs my arm to detain me. Alright, so now she's like, now she seems like she thinks that we have something specific to ask. Leaning back in her chair, Chizuru pu uh, pushes her glasses up her nose with the tip of a finger. We may not have spent that much time together, but we've known each other long enough. The woman can see right through me at times. Hmm. Well, it's not like I need to hide it, I suppose. It's about me to do. The cat belongs to her, by the way. Huh. I've learned that she's an extremely moody woman. Also, she sleeps in a room saturated with the sugary smell of cheap artificially colored candies. Ironically, that'd be one of the more normal things to expect of him, but no. Nothing to worry about. I paid a brief visit because I had something to discuss with her, that's all. I mean, it's obviously discouraged, but like having a girlfriend and having a relationship with said girlfriend isn't that weird for a school life. I mean, but you obviously want to be really careful. There's like, you want to make sure you don't cross certain lines and or doing so foolishly, which would be very, very problematic. So maybe that's ultimately like her concerns being like, you're still like young, like you got to be really careful making decisions that could become very permanent and very uh, long term if you're not ready. Hmm. After all this wandering around following a trail of breadcrumbs, it's unexpectedly bluebird arrive it's unexpected bluebird arrives on the scene. Does Chizuru have the answers I've been looking for? Honestly, I'd be grateful. That said, you can't exactly email me your records, I assume. Hmm. Alright then, let me ask you something. Does Michiru- <laughs> How does that even happen? At least the cat's likely not going to cause any trouble. But for some reason, I don't feel like asking Chizuru the question anymore. If anyone's going to tell me Michiru's story, it should be Michiru herself. Sorry, don't think I need the explanation after all. Shouldn't be necessary, really. If Michiru needs my help in some way, I'm sure she'll come to me herself. I feel like she wants us to ask, and she's kind of like, this is almost like her dangling the truth in front of us, but it's like, no, this is actually more out of respect. Sorry to waste your time. By asking Chizuru, I suppose I probably could have obtained a decent amount of new information, but when I remember Michiru quivering under her blanket, I think I made the right choice just now. I actually agree. I 100% agree. Now, it... It's one thing, like, if it's like a, an imminent life or death problem, maybe it would be better to just cut to the chase and just get the insight. But it'd be kind of cruel to work around her own inhibitions and her own, like, and shatter her own, like, level of trust. I mean, she might not have a problem with it in the end, but, like, that is a kind of violation to just kind of circumvent her own ability to talk to us about it or to choose not to. 
I can't help but feel that learning about Michiru's background without her knowledge would be a betrayal of sorts. Yeah, it's like, like I said, if it's necessary, maybe, but I don't think it's necessary yet. A few days later, after loading a, load, uh, loading the vaccine, after loading the vaccine Chizuru got me into a syringe, I decided to in in inoculate Michiru's mangy little cat. Problem being, the animal in question seems to despise me. Maybe it's picking up on the lingering scent of blood, instinctively hostile against a fellow predator. Either way, it's a problem. Making a dog behave itself is comparatively easy. They're generally not used to the heights. So plop it down an elevated up, uh, operating table and it'll be too busy quaking with fear to thrash around. Is that true? That sounds awful. But cats outright enjoy sharp different, different, uh, differentiated terrain. So doing a feline requires different methods. If you cover their eyes and hold them steady, they'll generally settle down. Same goes for most animals, really. Which is interesting. Because we tend to panic. Maybe it's because we have, like, really intense imaginations compared to cats and other animals. Also, like, gotta say, about our cat. Our cat is great. He's loving. He's he's a sweetheart. He's super, like, great to have around. But he absolutely is terrified of people. It's really bizarre because he's super bonded to us. Very social. Very, like, snuggly and, like, just always demanding attention. But then if we have anybody come to the house or if they... He, if he's outside and he sees another person, he just bolts. He just, he's terrified of other people. And, like, he'll act like, like a, he'll, he'll act, not feral, but he will go hyper defensive mode. He'll go cower. Um, he'll even hiss just at another person, like, coming into our house. Even if they've been over before, and even if we have no issue at all with them, obviously. And they're not even like a like a stranger, like someone who regularly comes over will still is still he'll still get a very like fear based reaction to. It's so interesting that he doesn't see us as like people because it's very clear he distrusts people in general. So maybe this is a very similar situation. But I don't know. This cat also seemed pretty content to just waltz up to UG and you know be social, so maybe not the same. That said, there's no point in covering the animal's head in a paper sack and suffocating it, which leaves me with the most fundamental strategy of all, pure physical restraint. This isn't going to go well. Hmm. Flash! Ah! So it's a money. I see. Good timing, actually. Tell me, have you do you have laundry net? I appreciate that. Still getting a lot of those brownie points for the potential second route, but not for now. No, I'll be using it myself. Don't worry about it. Hmm? I mean, frankly, it's one of those things where like. I can kind of understand not wanting another person to see or handle your underwear, but when you really get down to it, it's just more clothing. Unless you've got some, like, you know, questionable stains, but if you've got questionable stains, you shouldn't be wearing that anyway, right? Like, that's what you, that's what you just give up and just move on and get, get something else. And, like, the, frankly, like, if you're having that issue, like, I, I feel like you've got other problems to take care of that, rather than, you know, worrying about someone doing your laundry and, and then seeing something embarrassing. That just seems so bizarre to me. Now, because there's a lot more of a weird stigma for for female articles of underwear, I can understand not wanting if you're if you're a girl and want and like you might not want other people handling your underwear because there are weird people out there. But you don't see very many like stories about guys getting their underwear stolen. Now I'm sure it happens, but I feel like it a doesn't happen as often, and b I'd be surprised if most if 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 guys if there are, most guys are like me. I'd be surprised if any of them even noticed the a pair of their boxer box briefs or whatever went missing. That's not the issue here. I need a netting to minimize potential damage. Are you going to lend it to me or not? Thank you. You probably won't see it again. Sorry. Appreciate it. I'm not washing anything. Alright, see you later. 
もしかしてえ男性用ブラザー実は幼児は<笑>噂のあれを日常的に使ってるけど恥ずかしいからこっそり洗ってるとか ?No。Notorious male bra. Oh, the male brazier. Okay. I guess I can get that. Like, I think. Isn't it supposed to just be like a. Isn't a, It's not so re, truly like an actual bra. It's more about like having an. Like trying to make your, your shape more appealing. Maybe less bouncy, like a normal bra. I mean, guys can have a little jiggle too, but definitely not the same level. I don't know. This is a this is a field of clothing I have no experience with. I'm getting an impression I've left Amane with a fairly serious misunderstanding, but I have other priorities that take precedence right now. I can correct her delusion at a later date. Well then, even among trained veterans, many have difficulty handling cats. Strays in particular tend to bite and claw. Need to be careful. Taking a pinch of silver uh, of silver vine powder in my pocket, I rub a little onto my fingertips. You're around here, aren't you? Come on out. Silver vine, is that supposed to be like a catnip thing? There he is! I make a conspicuous rustling sound with a bag of pow with a bag of powder before long a cat wanders out of the brush to investigate. I bend down and hold out my hand. Most cats have a habit of sniffing at fingertips when they're made available. The black cat isn't particularly fond of me, but the scent of the powder does its work. It walks up cautiously, bringing its nose to my finger. And in that instant, your fate was sealed. <coughs> oh no. <laughs> Taking advantage of the cat's momentary carelessness, I pluck it up off the ground by the scruff of its neck, talk it, toss it into the laundry net I borrowed from Amane. Now the downside here is if he'd got it by the scruff of the neck, he might have been able to calm it down. It's a gamble, but he might have. Now that he's stuck it inside a net, there's no going back. This cat's gonna freak out. Some would doubtlessly take exception to the strategy from the perspective of animal welfare, but I planned it out fairly carefully to ensure that the least possible risk of, least of lasting harm to the creature. As for those of you who still have complaints, I'll listen once you're, I, you've liberated every pet on Earth from their collars and converted America to the vegan diet. Until then, surely you have better things to be worried about. I, that's a bit of a... What's that? Oh, that that's a, that's a logical fallacy, but which one is it? It's not the straw man. It has, it's similar to that. It's the uh, the one where you take an argument to it, to a... A like a logical extreme in order to try and make it sound like a frivolous argument, like, like the idea that like you can judge him for the way he treats animals once you stopped all the people who like abuse animals and people who eat meat from stopping because this is minor compared to that. It's like that's not a justification, or like like that doesn't work. There's like there's a big fallacy there. Um, I just can't remember the term off the top of my head, sadly, but. It's very clearly like not an actual argument a person would make if they want to be taken seriously. Um, but regardless of that, like there is good intentions here. I mean, animal control, like all, you see, it has this all the time where they can seem really cruel, but like the things that they do for animals, like trapping them or, or like, like grabbing strays and taking them to shelters, like it can seem cruel, but like, it's it's all in the in best interest of the pet and the public. <coughs> Who's doing the meowing? I've never thought about that, but somebody's doing the me the meowing sounds. Calm yourself, animal. Mean no harm. It's a simple vaccination. Something that are side effects, but rarely worse than a high fever. You won't die, trust me. Yeah. Hmm. That's right. Go limp. Not like you can escape anyway. Yeah. Here goes. I take out the nylon cosmetic pouch from my pocket. Naturally, there's no makeup inside. It just happens to be ideally sized for the inconspicu to inconspicuously store a certain pen-shaped syringe. Taking it out the item in question, I carefully jab the needle into my furry foe's flank. Meow. Aww. Good boy. Don't worry, it'll be all over soon. Relax. Meow. Oh no! What? <laughs> Dang, I was completely off guard to think I'd let you of all people take me back. This disgrace is unbearable. Go ahead, kill me. Don't 
Apparently, agitated by the arrival of its owner, the black cat violently rips open the net and leaps to freedom. <laughs> Were we at least able to get the injection done? Nothing bad, don't worry about it. I mean, it's fair. We we should be able to tell her that we gave her a shot. Like, give it a shot, right? For some reason, I find myself answering Michiru's question with the con cosmetic badge and bag and syringe held behind my back. Yeah, I get the message. Sorry about that. Convey my apologies to your cat as well. What a what a what a great name for a cat, Nekunya. <laughs> Seems I've reinforced the cat's enmity toward me. Haven't done myself many favors in the Michiru's book either. In retrospect, I might ha as well have told her the truth, but the words just didn't come out. Maybe I've been spending too much time around the girl. Her pseudo sundere seems like it might be rubbing off on me slightly. Well, that's all well and good, but what do I do about this net? Why are you talking weird? You seen a money around? What is going on? I'd appreciate it if you told me where she is. I see. Guess I'll head over there. Uh, what? What? Oh. oh, great. Okay. Okay, I see how it is. Mane's been, uh, been, been, been chatting a little bit. Great. Okay, so is a guy wearing a brazier more in, indicative of implicating, a, a, like, uh, like cross-dressing or potentially, uh, being transgendered. I mean, remember, you gotta remember, like, a lot of games, like, this came out a while ago, which is weird to say, but, like, the narrative and the understanding about, like, the trans community is way different than even a decade ago. Like, it's weird to say that, because, like, it feels like, oh, that wasn't that long ago, really. And then you think about it, you're like, oh, it kind of was, actually. <laughs> Um, but, I mean, at least she sounds accepting, although, like, like I said, the approach is coming more across of, like, you're, like, like, accepting something, like, uh, like, like, shocking, it's like, oh, it's like, is it that, like, it's like, people are people, they're gonna make their own choices, let them be what they are gonna be, and, like, whatever makes you happy, and, like, doesn't hurt other people, like, good, that sounds good to me. I see. So that's what this is about. <laughs> Listen, Sachi. That was a misunderstanding of Amane's. Pure fantasy. There's no truth to what you're imagining. I, I imagine it's more being played off as a joke, which is not great, but her earnestness and her willingness to be like, hey, like, like whatever, whatever you're going through, whatever you're choosing and whatever changes are going to be made, I am here for you. That's a great sentiment to have. I see. Nice to hear. I have to admit, though, the look of pa pain, determination in your eyes is the way you're chewing your lower lip leaves me with a slightly mixed feelings. Mm. Why? See, why are you so sad? What a joke. Forget it, Sachi. Amane, you in there? Oh, Yuji. 
Nani, do you stano? The net I borrowed from you ended up getting torn to shreds. Sorry about that. I'll get you an equivalent replacement later. いや、それは気にしなくていいのよ。だってほらね、男性用ともなるとワイヤーが強いやつ使ってるかもしれないしね。ハマれ。ネットが切れちゃうこともあるわよね。I don't wear a bra. え、そ、そんなこと言ってないじゃない。私がサモユージがブラをつけてると思ってるみたいな言い方やめてよね。But you do. 思ってます。Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's always like she's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, I want to ask you questions now. I'm telling you, I don't wear a bra, woman. I grab him on his hand, push it firmly up against my chest. What do you think? That's not what I'm asking. Does it feel like I'm wearing a bra? Glad we've come to an understanding. I'll be going now. Not the issue. <laughs> They're crying out loud. There are countless variety of awkward misunderstandings in the world, but this one has really distinguished itself in the mentally draining scale. Like a cheap LCD screen, the truth changes color based on your perspective. Best to view it from a fixed angle. Find a few sources you can trust and stick to them. Even actions you take with the best of intentions can easily be warped through misinterpretation into strange misdeeds. Happens every day, in fact. I sink into the sofa and heave a heavy sigh. In the end, nobody. We, we lost in every front there. Hmm. A certain playwright once wrote that any sorrow is temp uh, tempered if you have a friend to share it. And there's a long-standing British proverb to the effect of wine and friends only get better with age. But is there any truth to these claims? I'm not so, sir so sure myself. Let's say you set out on a trip looking around a few bags. You probably experienced some level of anxiety about them being lost or stolen, right? In that case, wouldn't it have been more pleasant to bring nothing at all? All the more if you were carrying something truly precious. Isn't it better to lock these things tre you treasure away in a safe box? Or perhaps not to treasure anything in the first place? I'm sitting in the lobby indulging in some after dinner reading when Amane walks up with Makina in tow. With my eyes from the summer of doors, I ask if they need something. Interesting. I mean, she was like here all summer, right? So that's a little odd that she would be going home now. Oh, wait, no, it's the middle of summer. We're not even in class anymore. That's what's going on. Nothing wrong with using summer vacation to see your family? Don't see any reason you should apologize to me. That is kind of true. I imagine it's one of those things where like... He's just like, I never asked you to do that, so it'll be fine. Then she's gonna be gone, and he's actually gonna miss her. Not a problem. As long as I have beans to eat, I won't die. He's the definition of big and strong. Are you making light of the nutrita. nutria. nutrita. I don't know if that's even a word. Nutria quality of beans, woman? <laughs> yeah, that food pyramid turned out to be absolute bullcrap, by the way. Piecing together your meals from all the groups, right? Pretty sure they retired that to, as a too inflexible and restrictive a guideline. Yeah, and it also was horrifically skewed by the grains section, which is absolutely not needing to be as big a foundation as they depicted it. It should be fruits and vegetables being the ground foundation, at least in a proper balanced way. So, so I see. Well, I don't don't worry about it. I think I'll get by one way or the other. Uh oh. Yeah, Makina, she's probably not gonna have fun. Now that I look, Makina's latched on Mane's sleeve, her small shoulders trembling, combined with her diminutive frame, she looks remarkably like a lost child at the moment. What's wrong, Makina? You that broken up over Mane leaving for a while? No, you two are practically sisters, but 
ちゃんと会えなくなるのが寂しいのよさ。Are you leaving too? Hmm? What do you mean by that? Amane gently strokes Makina's head a few times and gives me an exaggerated shrug of the shoulders. やっぱりこの子を置いていけないじゃないだから一緒に連れて行こうと思って。Okay, but why is she sad? That sounds like fun. Oh, how admirable. You're an exemplary guardian. You know that? Those idiots who get caught up playing basketball and forgetting their, child, their children in the car could learn a thing or two from you. <laughs> like, she's like, I'm gonna miss them and them and them, and I, can, I, you, I, I, don't, I won't miss Yumi chan very much. Is the cat just a permanent addition to the house now? What, Makina? Are you jealous of the cat? ね、ノーコメントってことうーん。ちょっと、なんで虫なのよ。まあ、まあ、きっと、みちると会えなくなるのが嬉しいのよ。だからこうして強がってるのよね。うーん。うん。うん。すっごく不満そうに返事したけ
そうそうあれよああいうのがあるとね意外に盛り上がるもんなのよイエーイバッファローゲームなんつってさはいでは花ひげメガネはダックスープ社のグルーチョくん4号をご用意させていただきます数は人数分でよろしくね私とユージとあんたとユミコお言葉ですがミチル様な、何よ。お金なら払うわよ。その辺をむにゃむにゃにすると、後で揉めるってわかってるんだからね。い,いえ、そういった若干の生臭い話ではなくてですね。実は私も、明日から親戚の家に泊まり込みをすることになっておりまして。Oh, man. ですから、3つで十分かと。Things are gonna get really quiet around here. Because even if Yubiko is staying here, which it might be, it might not be the case, but if she is. She doesn't tend to do stuff, so like it might just kind of come down to just us and Michiru. That's usually enough for you. じゃあ三人でゆっくりと羽を伸ばすとしましょうね。Two sets should be plenty, Sachi. I'm not going to partake. えー、なんですぐに二つで十分って言いたがるのよもう。予備も含めて多くあった方がいいでしょ。四枚お頼み申す。あのそれで結局いくつ用意すればよろしいのでしょうか。四個。Two. <笑>はい。<笑>では。二つ用意させていただきます。ああ、今何らかの上下関係を踏まえて判断した。ミチル様、物事には必ず優先順位というものが存在しますので。ですが、最初にきちんと四個用意しますが、そのうちの二個を持ってきます。そして、ミチル様、これで安心。た、確かに最初に私の言い分が守られてるなら。ではは、それでいいかもね。はい、ではお買い物に行ってまいります。Seems like it's going to get a good bit quieter around here. ま、まあね。でもさすがにこの広い量に二人きりってわけにはならないから大丈夫よ。ヨミコがいるもんね。Yeah, it definitely is. I, I, like, this is definitely not something that came across before, but Michiru has a. She doesn't like being alone. And I wonder if a lot of that could be like maybe it's her memory stuff, or maybe there's other reasons for that too. De Yumiko. Yumiko ga. Ma, Yumiko de mo ina yori wa mashi ka. Yoko no jure. Oh no! <laughs> with beautiful timing, Sakaki enters stage left with an enormous suitcase. An overseas vacation, perhaps? Michiru watches in utter shock, her mouth flapping in a manner strongly reminiscent of a stunned trout. Oh, you're taking a vacation as well, Sakaki? So, tomorrow. That's why I'm going to be here. 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 I'm going to be I. It's pretty. It's pretty good. Nichiru, my friend. Seems like it's going to be just you and me for a while. Okay, not sure what to make of that. So, 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 Hmm, two weeks isn't too long. If you find yourself unbearably anxious, I recommend holding, holding up in your room until all the, the others return. I'm sure you'll be able to handle a little solitary confinement. Hmm.
That's going to be interesting. All right. I think we are going to be starting this next week because it looks like it's going to get real interesting because now it's just going to be the two of us. Maybe we'll see some actual like progress in there, like understanding of things because like we've let things kind of rest for a while, which is fine. But like I want to learn more. I want to talk to Dark Me to do. I want to see like what some of that was all about. And I'm sure we'll get to it eventually, but... <laughs> This episode was kind of more of a stab- establishing the idea that like stuff we'd seen before is kind of been put to rest for now. So I'm not sure what to expect, but now the stage is being set for us to be here together by ourselves. Maybe it's going to give us opportunities to interact. And what I'm really interested to see is uh, because Dark Mutudu isn't as inclined to, to, to kind of fake her way through things when it's just us, we might actually watch the transition happen in real time. And that might be really fascinating. Anyway, thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you so much for joining me on the channel and for being a part of this journey. <sighs> it's nice to be back as always. Thank you for, for sticking it out and being patient. I am very, very happy to be back to making content. It's very cathartic for me. And I'm going to look forward to next week because I want to see what we do with Michiru now that like, it's just us. Like, how is this going to develop? Are we going to learn more about her past? Or is it going to be something that has to be, like, clawed into the light by, you know, circumstances beyond our control? We'll just have to figure that all out later. It also makes me wonder if, like, like the girls leaving on trips over the summer is a common thing through the other paths, or if this is unique to this path. Because, again, once we're on a dedicated path of an ending, I believe that it's typically done by a different writer. And so some of the events are not going to be consistent between the branches after like the paths kind of deviate from each other. So we'll have to see. But anyway, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for joining me on the channel. It's always wonderful to have you here. And I hope that we continue being able to work together, pushing forward and sharing these wonderful stories and characters as, you know, the world does whatever it's doing because goodness knows every day it feels like it's going something crazy is going on so hopefully we can keep moving forward and be able to have you know these you know little treasure joys to share and until this video watching me i've seen me next i'll see you there <laughs>